I'm gonna take the same color. I'm just wiping some of the excess off the brush. I'm gonna take the same color. This time, instead of pouncing the bristles open, I'm gonna use a chiseled edge, what we call a chiseled edge, very sharp and mat it right together. And down here, I want it dumping into some sort of little pool. So I'm just kind of randomly scuffing horizontally, leaving some of that black showing. The black gives the water the depth. I got a nice little trick I'm going to show you down here at the bottom, so I'm not going to take that all the way down there. I'm just uh, thinking this out loud as I'm doing it, because I'm kind of winging this, more or less. Not looking for anything too exact. Um, I'm going to show you how to put some submerged rocks in here. I'm going to grab this uh, one inch texture brush and I'm going to take some white and some burnt sienna, maybe a touch of purple. I'm thinking sand, something kind of a sandy color. I want this to look shallow down here. So I'm going to put that in like this and just let it kind of taper off as I bring it upward over that let the water look transparent over it I'll bring water back down over that here in a little bit all right this start look pretty good um, I go back to this fan brush with my bluish color and I'll bring a little bit of that right over the top of that sand color so it looks like you got the transparent film of water over the sand okay I'm going to wash my brush out. I've just got paint thinner in this pail. And I'm just going to swish that out, clean it out. I'm going to come back with pure white, fair amount of paint, and just kind of tap this together like this, just like I did before when I did the blue undertone. Good amount of paint on there. I want it to look like whatever light's coming through from above is kind of hitting the top of the waterfall. Where this comes down this way, it's going to be more into shadow. I'm not going to illuminate the whole thing. I'm just going to do it at the top right here. So it looks like you got strong light at the top of that falls. See how much more three-dimensional that looks? And like I said, with the three tones, I've got black in there, which is the dark value. I've got the mid-tone blue, and I've got the highlighted white. That's why I, I underpainted that with the black, because I was going to utilize the black in all of that, in the trees, in the water in the rock texture that I'm about to put in. I like to use my knife for the rock texture because uh, the knife is just uh, a texturing tool. That's what it's designed for. Now, I mix paint with it on my palette too, but more than anything, it, I apply it to my canvas. Um, I can actually take some of this uh, tree trunk color that I have here. I'm gonna change the flavor a little bit so it's not a dead ringer for the tree color, but I don't care if it's kind of in that family because that gives you color harmony. Um, so I've grayed that down a little bit, see? Um, depending on what, you know, rocks are brown, sometimes they're gray. So just get a color that you like. Make sure the value is light enough to show up against your dark black background. I know that's plenty light enough. That's going to show up against the dark black. So I pull that out in a flat little pile. Let me show you how I load this. So come right down here to the palette with me. And I, with my knife, knife wiped off, you can see that I just kind of scrape through and I get a little ridge around the edge of that knife. And something needs to throttle this water back, so I have to go a little higher here and cut that water off somewhat. It has to be a higher level to force that water through that opening. So I just kind of touch it on there and pat it and drag it, and I leave some of that black showing through it. See how those, those little dark nooks and crannies make it look like crevices within the rock? It works really nice. It's really easy to do. Just don't do anything repetitive. Notice how I'm turning the blade different angles and just kind of lightly scraping it on there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to come back and highlight some of this, especially towards the top, because if there's sunlight hitting the top of the falls, it's probably going to hit the top surfaces of these rocks way up here on the ledge. See, that falls together pretty easily. The one mistake I made is I didn't mix up enough paint, so I'm going to mix more of it. Everybody always says, well, I'll never get the same color. That's a good thing. If you don't always get the same exact shade, that's a good thing. It's boring if you use the same color throughout, so don't worry about mixing more paint. 
I know all I had in that was burnt sienna white and a little blue, so it can't be that hard to find. Looky there, I think I found it. All right, I'll just continue. See, the idea is to let some of that black show through there. That's what makes it work. That's where the magic is, right in that black undercoat. Look how three-dimensional, how nice that looks. And it's really pretty darn easy. Painting's like anything. You have to practice it a little bit. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. You're going to learn more, more from your mistakes along the way than anything I can ever show you. So don't be afraid to grab a brush and delve in because... Um, Everybody's going to have their own way of doing things. I have a certain style that I like, that I kind of adhere to. I'm not a patient person as far as painting. Although my students tell me, you have the patience of Job. Well, I do in a class situation because I was once in that student's same spot and I know what it's like to want to be able to do it and do it well. So I have patience with my students. But as far as just doing my own work, I am not the type that can spend 40 hours or more or three months on one painting. I like stuff uh, just kind of wham bam here it is so that's why I really like this style I say I'm letting this taper out I'm not using as much paint and letting the knife run out of paint so it just kind of melts into the shadows a little more I can take this same color now and I'm gonna lighten it and brighten it a little bit I'm gonna take a little more white a little more sienna and like I said, is in my mind, if the, wa if the sunlight is hitting the top of that falls, it's got to hit the top of these rocks here somewhere. So I'm going to come back, take a little bit of a lighter tone like this, and I will, I'm going to load the knife the same way as I did before. Just get a little ridge on the back side of that, just use a very light touch. I'm going to keep this more near the top of the falls, not down over the edge so much. In my mind, that's in shadow down here. So it's just a little light dabbing and dragging motion. And you can't feel it, obviously, at home there, but I, I can actually feel this stickiness on my palette, and I'm utilizing that. When that paint that's on my knife grabs the paint underneath, it feels like peanut butter. It's sticky. And that's when I know that I just slightly drag over it, and it pulls that paint apart and yields this texture that I'm looking for. I don't think it would hurt a thing to go a little bit brighter than that even. I'm going to take a little more white into that just to really jazz it up. Painting is nothing but a series of decisions. You have to decide what you want, how you want it, how you want to show it. I want a little more light in here, so I'm going to, this is just an adjustment. I'm just going to make it a little lighter right there. I think I'm going to like it a little nicer if I go a little bit lighter up here on the top, give it a little more emphasis of light and dark. Painting is all about lights, darks, hard edges, soft edges, and warm colors and cool colors. Okay, that's looking pretty darn good, I think, don't you? Okay, I'm gonna come back with this brush that I had uh, earlier. It's my one inch scenery brush. I had this color with the uh, tree leaf color in it. I'm gonna take a little bit of my cadmium yellow and a little touch of white into that. And again, notice how I'm loading it right on the tips of those bristles. Really getting a lot of paint on there. That's why I specifically asked for this brush to have the bevel on it. Because I can just loosen up that corner and it just gives me that really nice, loose, leafy texture. I'm going to say there's a few little shrubs or grassy foliage type things up here on the top of the hill. Notice because of the dark behind it, this light green really pops off there. It's a matter of the contrast. And I knew that. That's why I left that darker at the top of the falls and the background trees looked like the trees fall into shadow. This stuff comes closer. If I come down over the hill, in my mind, it's going to be in shadow. So I don't want to go quite so light green or yellowy. So I would take some of that green with more sap green, maybe a little touch of the emerald green, and this time a little bit of blue. This is a hotter, warmer temperature with the yellow in it. If I come in with some blues into my green, it's going to be more shadow more of a shadow tone, which will be appropriate for down here over the ledge. It's a little cooler. See that? It looks like it's in shadow. So I'm going to add just a couple drops of medium to that. 
and you know in the little nooks and crannies and crevices here and there there could be a little bit of uh, mossy grassy stuff in here again if you're doing this at home just decide how you want it and how much you want to put in there <laughs>